Ladies and gentlemen, annual outlooks are often a mixture of forecasts and hope. When looking at the negative sentiment consumers and businesses currently have, there seems to be very little hope this time around. Our forecasts are clear. Given high energy prices and interest rates, a recession will be unavoidable in the US and in Europe. Growth in China will be unspectacular as it still clings onto its zero COVID tolerance policy and continues its crackdown on the real estate market. In this environment, corporate profits will likely decline. Such a decline will also be necessary to bring down inflation since high corporate margins were one of the reasons that prices have increased this year. But there are more reasons for inflation to fall next year. Price increases for goods should ease as supply bottlenecks diminish and demand slows. On the services side, pent-up demand has lifted prices for travel, hotels, restaurants and many other services that could not be consumed during the pandemic. A moderation seems quite likely next year once consumption patterns normalize. Finally, while energy and food prices might not decline significantly as long as the war in Ukraine drags on, they are unlikely to increase by the same amount as this year. And this would already be enough for inflation rates to fall. Central banks would surely welcome these developments. However, at this stage, they cannot take them for granted. Essentially, they don't know if households and businesses behave similarly in the currently high inflation environment as they did during the years when inflation was simply not a topic. Central banks cannot risk wage price spirals or a de-anchoring of inflation expectations. When it comes to inflation, they would rather want to be safe than sorry. This implies that they likely over-tighten and keep rates high for too long. We expect the US Fed to hike policy rates to 5.5, the Bank of England to 4 and the ECB to 3%. We can also imagine that the Bank of Japan gives up its current yield curve control. The only thing that we don't forecast are rate cuts next year. High policy rates already lead to high mortgage interest rates. They should slow down the real estate sector and lead to lower house prices. Higher rates will definitely reduce corporate profitability such that the outlook for the equity market should remain muted at the beginning of next year. We are more optimistic about the later part of 2023 once central banks have reached their terminal policy rates and in 2024 when we expect rate cuts again. However, for the time being, we are underweight equities and focus on defensive equity sectors and countries. With the Fed hiking more aggressively than other central banks, the US dollar should remain strong in the first half of the year, even though it clearly seems overvalued from a medium-term perspective. Gold should benefit once the US dollar and the Fed funds rate have peaked. We also remain positive for the Swiss franc as the country's low inflation rate of only 3% currently makes it more attractive and stable than almost any other currency. We are also facing a new policy mix. With the war in Ukraine continuing and rising tensions between the US and China, wartime policies have become more dominant. These include all sorts of non-market solutions like price controls, rationing, export controls and taxing excess profits. We also expect more expansionary fiscal policies as defense spending will increase as well as infrastructure spending to fight climate change or to manage the demographic transition. More expansionary fiscal policy is inflationary and this will make a more restrictive monetary policy necessary. Negative policy rates will remain history. In the coming years, policy rates and bond yields will be structurally higher than in the past decade. This means that there is one clear winner in the current environment. The bond market is back. Let me be clear, fixed income investments provide attractive return and risk premium gap. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. I hope we are able to help you make the right decisions in this new environment and wish you all the best for 2023.